Today, I'm going to talk about something that might be a little controversial, but it's actually supported by science. And that is that some dairy products, and I'm going to talk about two of them, yogurt and hard cheeses, might have the possibility to help fight cancer and help burn body fat all at the same time. Now, most people would be surprised that a scientist and a physician like me who studies food and medicine would even dare to identify dairy foods as having possible health benefits for diseases like cancer and excess body fat. I mean, after all, doesn't dairy product have excess uh, fat, excess salt, and it causes inflammation? Well, this is where the research gets really interesting. First of all, one of the things that's really important for me as a food as medicine researcher to do is to keep my eyes open and my mind open for data and not to really quickly assign uh, good guy or bad guy labels to foods. And that's really, I think, very central to the way that I approach my work. And when it comes to food, the foods are complicated and we don't understand everything that they might do. And so we have to keep our eyes open to observe and then to think through what might be the reasons for benefits or harm, right? So let's take a look at the first dairy product, yogurt. Yogurt is a dairy product and it's been already proven to be beneficial for health and longevity, meaning that yogurt's a probiotic food, it's fermented, it's got healthy bacteria, that actually blooms during the uh, creation of the yogurt. And basically bacteria grow and the good bacteria outgrow the harmful bacteria. And that's what's packaged up and that uh, what you actually eat. Now, scientists hundreds of years ago have noticed that people who eat whole yogurt and some of the earliest uh, findings, observations were done in Bulgarian monks that were eating uh, yogurt every single day. They lived to ripe old ages. And the thinking at the time was that there must be something in the yogurt that was actually contributing to their uh, longevity. And what was that? Well, today we know yogurt actually contains healthy bacteria. It's a probiotic food that when you eat it, that bacteria actually contributes to your healthy gut microbiome. The gut microbiome is a colony of bacteria, a community of bacteria in your gut. There's about 39 trillion of those bacteria. And that bacteria acts like a, a community of good neighbors. Why are they good neighbors? Well, good healthy bacteria actually lower inflammation in your body. They raise immunity to help your immune system become stronger. And by the way, cancer actually is battled invisibly in your body by a good strong immune system. So uh, good healthy gut bacteria helps your immune system battle diseases, including uh, cancers, specifically microscopic cancers. And good healthy gut bacteria uh, also improve your metabolism. They help you control body fat. Excess body fat uh, leads to inflammation. Inflammation is a setup for cancer, right? As well as the growing of body fat. So good healthy gut microbiome uh, does that. And when you actually have a well-balanced microbiome, it's actually called a eubiotic state, E-U-B-I-O-T-I-C, eubiotic. Now, when the microbiome is not in good shape, it's called um, dysbiotic or dysbiosis. And that's actually when your gut bacteria are, are, are in a, a state of disrepair. Good neighborhood starts to have uh, bad neighbors moving in. They start to riot. There goes the neighborhood. And that's actually what happens when you actually have um, unhealthy bacteria. Now, the other thing about good bacteria is you want to have a high diversity. A good neighborhood has different types of people. They mix together. They're all richer for uh, each other's differences. And it's the same thing for your gut microbiome. And so you want to actually eat foods that give you good gut diversity. Now, this is one of the reasons why eating colorful flu foods that actually contain a lot of different polyphenols that help contribute to their color, uh, their diverse colors, actually also contributes to helping to grow different diverse species of good, healthy bacteria. Now, if you actually have good, healthy, diverse bacteria in your gut, what do they do that's beneficial? Well, they produce these metabolites. Now, metabolites just something that comes out of the uh, the organism, in this case, the bacteria. Once they eat something, it gets metabolized, they spit it out or it poops it out or comes out of the, of the, of the body. And these metabolites uh, for the bacteria are called short chain fatty acids. S, sh uh, short chain C fatty acids, FA. We abbreviate that and call them SCAFAs. And there are three different types of short chain fatty acids that good, healthy bacteria in your gut actually produce. These are all beneficial because they help to lower inflammation, 
boost immunity. Uh, they improve our metabolism, make our body more insulin sensitive, so we're more efficient in our, uh, with uh, uh, drawing down uh, glucose in our blood. And good healthy bacteria also text our brain to make us feel better, uh, improve our cognition, and actually put us in a better mood. All right? All good things with good healthy bacteria. Now, these short chain fatty acids, the SCAFAs, are produced when the bacteria are fed, uh, as I said, plant based foods with dietary fiber. So the polyphenols are helpful to, the, to grow of a whole bunch of different types of diversity and the gut bacteria, but the dietary fiber is sort of like their main food that they munch on, it's kind of like dog food that you feed your pet dog uh, every single day. Um, and how do you get dietary fiber? Well, you eat, you eat foods like avocados and broccoli and kiwi and apples and many other foods that you can find in the produce section of the grocery store or the farmer's markets. And you can also eat tr nuts like tree nuts, um, like uh, walnuts and pistachios and pecans and cashews and almonds macadamia nuts and seeds too. Flax seeds, pine nuts. Seeds are also a great source of dietary fiber. When you eat polyphenols, colorful foods, or tree nuts with dietary fiber, guess what? It actually makes your gut bacteria more diverse. Uh, healthy bacteria grow. They produce short-chain fatty acids. Inflammation goes down. And when inflammation goes down, it actually uh, tips your odds in favor of your health as opposed to cancer. Now, why is that? Because cancer is a disease that thrives in an inflammatory state. So when you got inflammation around, you're actually more likely to trigger cancer growth. Now, we're all forming microscopic cancers in our body all the time. And the reason that they're not growing all the time in a big way is because your body has the ability to cut off the blood supply of cancer. It's called anti-angiogenesis. It's, it's hardwired in our body to be able to do this. Um, and then the cancers stay small and tiny. They don't have a blood supply, no oxygen, no nutrients. They don't grow. And then our good, healthy immune system, which relies on good, healthy gut bacteria, wings by like cops on a beat, spotting a something abnormal, like a drug dealer on a corner of a, of a peaceful neighborhood. It's kind of like a microscopic tumor sitting in your body in an organ someplace. And what does the cop do? Takes a bad guy, throws him in a paddy wagon, and your immune system will actually destroy that microscopic cancer. So that's basically how we stay healthy. And when uh, we eat foods like yogurt, a dairy product like yogurt, and we're feeding our gut bacteria, lowering inflammation, boosting immunity, we are tipping the odds in favor of our body being able to be in a state to resist cancer, uh, and which is actually um, the setup for preventing cancer as well. Now, a couple of caveats that actually is really important for you to think about. When you buy actually yogurt, you don't, you want to buy whole fat yogurt. Don't buy low fat yogurt. All right. Now you might think low fat is going to be better for me, right? Dr. Lee wrong. It turns out low fat yogurt. Um, uh, when you pull the fat out of yogurt, it kind of collapses. It's kind of like a thick puddly milk. So manufact yogurt manufacturers will put emulsifiers. Emulsifiers are thickeners like polysorbate um, 80, uh, uh, carrageenan, all these other thickeners in order to restore the mouthfeel so that you taste, it tastes like yogurt, tastes like whole fat yogurt. Well, it turns out researchers have now found that emulsifiers actually harm your gut microbiome. When you harm your gut microbiome, even though you're eating a probiotic food like yogurt, you're actually harming, accidentally harming your gut microbiome. And in fact, inflammation rises, all right? And that actually increases your risk for all kinds of chronic diseases including cancer. So you don't want that. All right. So whole fat yogurt is the way to go. Now, the other thing you want to do is uh, not hurt your gut microbiome because you need a strong immune system. You want to fight cancer, especially if you're actually receiving a kind of treatment, the latest kind of treatment called immunotherapy. You want uh, the best chances of surviving cancer. You want to get immunotherapy. Immunotherapy is in some ways the most natural way to treat cancer because it um, invites your body, your own immune system to be as powerful as possible to go after those cancer cells. All right. It's not chemo. It's immunotherapy using your body's own immune system to, to help tip the odds in your favor. So dairy products like yogurt that help your gut microbiome actually power up your immune system, which tips the odds in your favor against cancer, especially if you're receiving immunotherapy for treating uh, cancer. All right. So that's one of the dairy foods I want to talk about. Yogurt. Uh, another little tip about yogurt, besides getting whole yogurt and not low fat yogurt, is don't get pre sweetened yogurt. 
You know what I'm talking about? When you're talking about the yogurt that you get in a container and you look at it, it's got this like layer of sweetness to it. It's blueberry flavored, it's grape flavored, it's strawberry flavored. The stuff tastes good, but I can tell you don't do that because those sweetened layers are basically jelly with added sugar and we have, and sometimes artificial coloring uh, and maybe artificial flavoring. And what that does is it actually um, the heart your gut microbiome and adds sugar into your body that you don't want, all right? Instead, use um, uh, get plain whole yogurt, cut ripe seasonal fruit. You want strawberries? Get some ripe strawberries during the summer. You want blueberries? Get fresh blueberries um, when they're ripe. And by the way, you can also even use frozen because they the, the strawberries and blueberries, even though they're sweet, so I'm not complaining about the sugar part, I'm talking about the added sugar part, not the natural sugar in the fruit, Strawberries have a lactic acid, cuts off the blood supply to the tumor. Blueberries have anthocyanins, which give blueberry their color, their natural dark blue color. That cuts off the blood supply to tumors. Add your own good stuff. Don't rely on the, on the factory, the manufacturer, to come up with the stuff for you that actually might tip the odds against your favor. One step forward, two steps back, don't do it. Whole fat yogurt, cut your own fruit into it. Want to put a little drizzle of honey, like the Greeks do, uh, maybe a sprinkling of crushed nuts. Listen, that's a really healthy uh, uh, breakfast that can help you tip the odds uh, in your favor against cancer. The other thing that yogurt does is by helping your good gut bacteria uh, ramp up, it improves your metabolism, uh, helps you uh, regulate, improve regulation of your blood lipids, uh, and actually can help to fight harmful body fat. All right, when you remove harmful body fat, visceral fat, guess what? You lower inflammation in your body. So here's something that can help tip the odds in your favor against cancer and help you lose weight. Yogurt, whole yogurt uh, is that. And if you cut up your, uh, your own fresh ripe fruit, now you're adding polyphenols that are present in fruits in order to be able to uh, enhance the benefits of this dairy product, which is actually yogurt. All right. Now I'm going to talk about another dairy product that's probably going to surprise you even more. And that is hard cheeses. What am I talking about with hard cheeses? They tend to come from Northern Europe. You're talking about Jarlsberg, uh, Emmentaler, Gouda, or Hauda, that's how they pronounce it uh, in the Netherlands. Cheeses, these are hard cheeses. Um, uh, and research has actually shown that modest consumption of hard cheeses can lower the risk of both heart disease and some forms of cancer as well. Now this is a association, these are epidemiological studies. And the question is, how is it, can that happen? How is that possible? Cheeses have saturated fat. Don't they cause more inflammation, et cetera, et cetera? Well, here is where I told you, you have to look at the data. If the data suggests there's something beneficial, don't just reject it out of hand, all right? Think about it. And this is where researchers like me have actually dug down deep to try to figure out a possible explanation for this. So here's the deal with hard cheeses. Some hard cheeses, like Jarlsberg, Gouda, Emmentaler, all right, um, they're very high in a special type of vitamin called vitamin K2, all right? Vitamin K2 is a special vitamin that is anti-angiogenic, cuts off the blood supply to tumors, all right? Check this out. I've got a free guide on my favorite breakfast foods to eat for longevity, from what's in my mug to what I look for when I buy these staples at the grocery store. It's all right here. All you have to do is click on the link and enjoy. So this vitamin, which is found in hard cheeses, is beneficial. Another name for it is menaquinone. Now, I'm not recommending that you eat cheese to battle cancer, nor am I actually telling you cheese is a health food. But I want to actually show you how uh, this, this dairy product, cheese, does have some evidence that it can be beneficial and is associated with lowering the risk of both heart disease and cancer when you eat it in moderation, all right? Now, the reason I'm telling you this is because, look, many of us love cheese, uh, me too, all right? And so rather than feel completely guilty, and you should know that the research is showing that there's some benefits, a key, absolutely key to eating cheese is moderation, all right? So if you wanna actually eat cheese and get the benefits of cheese, which by the way, cheese is also a probiotic food. It's basically a fermented dairy product it's actually good for your, your gut bacteria as well, but the vitamin K2 of hard cheeses is beneficial, all right? And net-net, it actually contributes 
when you eat cheese and hard cheeses in moderation, it contributes to uh, what's inside your body that can actually help to lower the risk of cancer by fighting cancer. All right. And what about vitamin K2 and body fat? Right. Well, this has been studied by researchers in the Netherlands at Maastricht University. All right. Um, now, what they did, these researchers, they en enrolled 20, 214 women who are postmenopausal. These women were between the ages of 55 and 65. And what they did, the researchers gave them vitamin K2, the same type of K2 that's found in hard cheeses. They gave them vitamin K2 to eat every day for three years. All right. And they compared this vitamin K2 eater group to women who were just given a placebo. Now, the results after three years were really surprising. The women who ate vitamin K2 had a reduction in their body weight, so they lost weight. They also lost body fat, and the kind of body fat they lost was visceral fat, the harmful excess visceral fat that's found in the tube of your body that wraps itself around your organs and then leaks inflammation. They actually lost that as well. And what they also found in the blood of the vitamin K2 eaters is they found higher levels than the placebo of a hormone called adiponectin. Adiponectin is made by fat cells, healthy fat cells. And what adiponectin does is it actually helps insulin in our body, the hormone that actually helps to draw blood sugar into our cells and to store it for energy. Adiponectin helps insulin actually work more efficiently. And uh, when, it, in, when the adiponectin levels are high, insulin is more efficient, blood glucose comes down, the glucose levels in your blood come down faster, more efficiently, and overall, you're metabolically healthier, all right? And eating vitamin K2 can increase adiponectin levels in the bloodstream. So let's just sum up here. Cheeses, hard cheeses that contain vitamin two, like uh, Jarlsberg, uh, Gouda, Hauda, and Emmentaler cheeses. These are Northern European cheeses. They, have, they can benefit your metabolism and they can tip the odds in your favor against cancer through vitamin K2. All right. Remember, vitamin K2 can cut off the blood supply to cancer, anti-angiogenic vitamin. Now, I love cheese, but the key thing is to eat it in moderation. All right. Just be very, very careful because it does contain saturated fat. It does contain a lot of salt. And those are some of these other factors that are not so good for us. All right. So eating cheese in moderation actually has some uh, benefits uh, that you should know about. All right. And of course, if you don't eat dairy products and you don't eat cheese, totally fine. It's an optional food. Uh, you can steer your way around it just fine. But this video is really about the surprising benefits of cheese when it comes to fighting cancer, tipping the odds against cancer, and helping you fight body fat. All right. Hope you learned something new. I'm pretty sure you did because this is really real researchy type of information that causes us to rethink what we always thought. And thanks for watching the video. I will catch you the next one. Hi there. If you enjoyed watching this video, I know you'll love the next one. Stay here and check it out and I'll see you there.